You are welcome once again to the course Introduction to Animal Physiology. This is the episode 2 of Digestive Physiology. This time, we'll start by looking at the mouth. I have to let you know that I'll be using the human mouth to explain since it is the same thing or something close with that of the animals. This is the structure of the mouth and the muscles of the mouth. The mouth is a mucosa lined cavity, also known as the oral or buccal cavity. It is bonded by the lip anteriorly, palate superiorly, and tongue inferiorly. The anterior opening is the oral orifice. It is a continuous posteriorly with the oropharynx via the fauces. The space between the lip and the feet and gum is called the oral festival, while the space between the gum, teeth, and oropharynx is the oral cavity proper. It is lined by squamous epithelium, which are stratified, which provide protection against heat, chemicals, abrasions, and pathogens. The leaves and cheeks help contain food or fish during chewing and play a role in speech. The orbicularis oris forms the core of the lip, while the bucinator forms the core of the cheek. The labia frenula are the small folds of tissue that join each lip to the gum. The arterial portion of the roof of the oral cavity is the ad palate. The palatine process of the maxillary bones and the horizontal plates of the palatine bones forms its core. Posterior to the ad palate is the soft palate. It lacks bone and its core is primarily composed of skeletal muscle. During swallowing, it rises and closes off the entry of the nasopharynx. The soft palate is anchored to the tongue by the palatogosa axe, and the wall of the oropharynx by the palatopharyngea axe. The tongue is composed of interlacing bundle of skeletal muscle. Intrinsic muscles of the tongue are confined to the tongue and adjust its shape. Extrusive muscles of the tongue are anchored to the skull and adjust the tongue's position. The tongue grips the food or feed and mixes it with saliva to form a moist mass called bolus. It initiates swallowing by forcing the bolus into the oropharynx. The lingua frenulum is the fold of tissue that anchors the tongue to the floor of the oral cavity. The superior tongue, so the superior tongue surfaces bears papillae, which are projections of the mucosa. Papillae increase surface area, which create friction that can assist in eating or manipulating food. Papillae also contains taste birds. The root of the tongue contains lingua tonsil, the salivary gland. There are three pairs of extrusive salivary glands, which lie outside the oral cavity. They produce most of the saliva involved in eating. They are scattered throughout the oral mucosa 
and a small incisive saliva glands which help give the oral mucosa its moistness between meals. The saliva gland produces a lot of saliva which could be between 1 to 1.5 liters in humans and could be as much as 4 liters in cattle per day. The saliva functions to moisten and clean the mouth. It dissolves food particles and stimulates the papillae, which are the taste buds. It contains mucus that lubricates the bolus and contains enzymes that begins chemical digestion of starch. The entity salivary glands are parotid glands, submandibular gland, and sublingual glands. The parotid is formed anterior to the ear between the mesteric and skin. The submandibular gland lies along the medial aspect of the body of the mandible. The sublingual gland lies anterior to the submandibular gland and under the tongue. Saliva is made up of between 97 to 99 percent water and it contains electrolytes, salivary amylase, which is an enzyme that chemically digests starch, contains secretory immunoglobulin A and lysosome, which provide immune defense. And it also contains mucin, a protein that when dissolved in water forms mucus. Different cells within the, mama, the salivary glands produce different kinds of saliva. We'll go on to look at the layers of the digestive tract. From this slide, the digestive tract which runs from the oesophagus to the anal canal, the wall of the digestive tract have same basic four layer arrangements, which are the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and serosia or adventitia. The mucosa is the innermost layer and lines the lumen. Its functions include secretion of mucus and enzyme into the tract lumen, secretion of hormones into plasma, protection against infectious diseases, absorption of digestive end products into plasma and lymph. The mucosa contains three sublayers which are the epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa, which is the muscle of the mucosa. The epithelium lines the lumen and is simple columnar in the intestines and stomach, and stratified squamous in the esophagus and anal canal. The lamina propria is a layer of loose connective tissue underneath the epithelium. It contains capillaries for nutrient absorption and lymph nodes for pathogen de defense. The muscularis mucosa lies the lamina propria. It's a thin layer of smooth muscle that can adjust the degree of folding of the mucosa. The submucosa is external to the mucosa. It's made up of dense connective tissue and contains blood and lymphatic vessels, lymphoid nodes, and nerve fibers. It is a strong layer that provides vascular support to most structures of the GIT wall. It is the site of much of the nervous coordination of the secretory and motor activities of the mucosa. The muscularis externa is external to the submucosa. It's primarily smooth muscle and is responsible for peristalsis and other movements. It's typically divided into two, two sublayers. You have 
the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer. In several sites, the circular layer thickens to become a sphincter, which is like a rubber band, which regulate passage of materials and prevent backflow. Blood vessels, levatic vessels, and a large number of nerve fibers are between the two layers. The nervous element helps coordinate the tone of both the layers of the external and secretory activities of the mucosa. The serosa. The serosa is the outermost layer of the intraperitoneal organs. It's also called visceral peritoneum. It consists of a simple squamous epithelium overlying some thin areolar connective tissue. It's often associated with blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and adipose tissue. The serosa not only supplies the vascular, nervous, and lymphatic elements to the gut wall, it moistens also reduce the amount of friction between organs. The oesophagus has an identity rather than a serosa. It's a layer of fibrous connective tissue that firmly holds the organ in place. Mitoperineal digestive organs have a serosa, which is on the side next to the peritoneal cavity, and an adventitia on the dosa side. We'll go on to look at the esophagus and the stomach. The esophagus is a muscular 10-inch tube that propels food from the larynx gopharynx to the stomach. It will interest you that no digestive process are initiated within the esophagus. It collapsed when not propelling food or feed. It runs through the mediastrinum and pierces the diaphragm at the oesophageal hiatus and joins the stomach at the cardiac orifice. The so-called cardiac or gastroesophageal sphincter surrounds the opening of the oesophagus into the stomach. Anatomically, it is not a true spring star. It's more of a suture that helps prevent reflux of stomach contents. That is why when a person or animal turns upside down, the content of the stomach hardly comes into the mouth. The esophageal mucosa is stratified squamous epithelium, which is thrown into foods when empty. The submucosa contains mucous secreting gland for lubrication. It contains both skeletal and smooth muscles. The muscular external is unique in that it contains both, both muscles and in the upper layer is the skeletal muscle. The middle layer or the middle length is a mixture of skeletal and smooth muscle, while the later end of the esophagus that joins the stomach is a smooth muscle. The adentitia is a layer of dense connective tissue that binds the oesophagus to surrounding structure. The presence of food in the oesophagus triggers reflex and results in peristatus which forces the food down to the stomach. Now the stomach. The stomach is an enlarged segment of the tract that functions mainly in storing food and mixes the food with gastric juice, creating a paste called chyme. Other functions include chemical digestion of proteins to secretion of intrinsic factor, a chemical that is necessary for vitamin B12 absorption, which is necessary for the synthesis of red blood cells. Three, destruction of ingested bacteria via the secretion of hydrochloric acid. When the stomach is empty, 
it forms a physical fold called the rugae. They allow the stomach to expand as it fills with food or feed. The major regions of the stomach include cardiac region, fundus, body, and pyloric region. The cardiac region is a small area that surrounds the gastroesophageal junction, while the fundus is a dome shaped portion that bulges upward superiorly to the cardia. The body the large mid portion of the stomach, while the pyloric region is a funnel shaped region connecting the body to the stomach to the small intestine. The wider part of the funnel is called pyloric antrum, while the narrow part is the pyloric canal. The terminus of the stomach is the pylorus. Junction between the pylorus and the duodenum is controlled by a pyloric spring star. The concave lateral surface of the stomach is of greater curvature, while the concave medial surface of the stomach is the lesser curvature. Hanging from the curvatures are the omenta. The lesser omenta is a mesentery that connects the lesser curvature of the stomach to the liver. The greater omenta is a fold of mesentery that drapes from the inferior surface of the greater curvature, covers the small intestine and attaches to the transverse colon. There are different basic cell types of the stomach. The stomach contains the typical four layers. The gastric mucosa has a tube-like invagination called gastric pits. The gastric mucosa is covered by the surface epithelium cells, also known as surface mucosal cell. It also has gastric pits that leads into the gastric gland, which secretes gastric juice. The basic third types are mucous neck cells, which are found in the upper region. They secrete acidic mucus and function as stem cells for the surface cells. The chief cells secrete pepsinogen, an inactive form of protease, pepsin, which is activated by hydrochloric acid. Next is the parietal cells found in the mid portion. They secrete hydrochloric acid as well as intrinsic factor, which gives the stomach its low pH and usually around 1 to 3 as well as intrinsic factors, as I've said. The fourth is the enteroendocrine cells which secretes multiple hormones into the plasma. An example is the gastrin released by G cells, which regulates motility and secretory activity. With all this, the presence of acid and proteins within the stomach lumen, why is the stomach not digested by itself? The answer is, the presence of a bicarbonate containing mucus lines the wall is a thick coating. Damaged cells are quickly shed and replaced. Epithelium is linked by tight junctions which prevent leaking of gastric juice. The gastric Muscularis externa contains three layers rather than the two normal layers. Deep to the circular layer of the muscle is the oblique layer. The oblique layer allows the stomach to churn, mix, and pummel food or feed. There are two basic types of muscular movement in the stomach, which are the mixing wave, which mix ingested material with the gastric secretion, and peristaltic waves 
that are more powerful and force chime towards the pyloric spring star. Each peristasis wave forces a small amount of chime through the pylorus. Note that food products are not absorbed in the stomach except alcohol and some drugs. The gastric activity which is muscle contraction and secretion of gastric juice, is stimulated by one, cephalic phase, which is stimulated by sight, smell, taste, or thought of food. The sight or thought of food stimulates the cerebral cortex to stimulate the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then initiates a parasympathetic signal to the stomach via the vagus nerve and this is stimulate and this commences the gastric activities and the stomach releases the hormone gastrin gastrin then stimulate gastric activity two is the gastric phase indirectly in response to stretch or the presence of amino acid within the stomach both activate short and long reflexes which are phagovagal reflexes that stimulate gastric activity as well as gastrin release and is responsible for the greatest volume of gastric juice secretion. 3. In the, in the intestinal phase. Indirectly by the initial feeling of the duodenum with chyme, the initial presence of chyme causes duodenal endocrine cells to release intestinal gastrin which also stimulate gastric activity and this is also known as the intestinal phase gastric activity can be stopped or inhibited by the accumulation of chyme within the duodenum in response to stretch or duodenal endocrine cells begin to release hormone known as enterogastrons these include cholecystokinin cicatrin and fasoactive intestinal peptide and they act to inhibit gastrin activity. 2. Gastric activity can also be inhibited by various drugs, stress, anxiety and fear. That is, by increased sympathetic activity. The stomach typically empties about, about 4 hours after meal, although the size and content of the meal can greatly influence the rate of empty. Thank you. We shall continue during the next episode.